Hi, welcome to the Amy Noel YouTube channel. If you like what I'm doing, making videos for the dyslexic community, especially for parents of kids with dyslexia, please subscribe to this channel. And I have five sons with ADHD and dyslexia. Today I want to talk about what dyslexia is. I'm going to give you a thorough definition that makes sense to a person like me. These are things that have stuck out to me as I've been learning about dyslexia over the last seven years. The First Step Act was signed into law by Donald Trump December 21st, 2018, and it states that dyslexia means an unexpected difficulty in reading for an individual who has the intelligence to be a much better reader most commonly caused by a difficulty in phonological processing, the appreciation of the individual sounds of spoken language, which affects the ability of, of an individual to speak, read, and spell. Pulling apart and putting together words is very challenging for a person with dyslexia. Other than phonological processing issues, dyslexia also affects executive functioning, sequencing, and working memory. A person with dyslexia may not have symptoms in every single one of these areas because it affects everybody differently. Dyslexia is highly genetic. According to understood.org, it's clear that there is a hereditary aspect of dyslexia because it runs in families. About 40% of siblings of kids with dyslexia also have reading issues, and as many as 49% of their parents do too. Dyslexia is sometimes considered to be a neurodevelopmental disorder. I believe it is. Other people say it is not and that it's just a learning disability. There's research on both sides. Other people call dyslexia a learning difference, and I agree with this term because brain imaging actually shows which parts of the brain are overactive in the dyslexic mind and which parts are underactive. The language centers are underactive and when they're taught in ways that capitalize on those dyslexic strengths they are able to read and spell and all of those other things especially if they're taught very early in this particular way. Because of this neurological difference, there are common strengths among dyslexic individuals. These are important to include in the definition of dyslexia because they can be taken into account when assessing a person for dyslexia. Well-documented strengths or advantages of dyslexic people are visualization, holistic thinking, creativity, problem solving, intuition, and interpersonal intelligence. People with dyslexia commonly have a strength in understanding structures, how things fit together, how ideas fit together, or physical things fit together. The Nessie website lists nine strengths of dyslexia, seeing the bigger picture, finding the odd one out, improved pattern recognition, good spatial knowledge, picture thinking, sharper peripheral vision, business entrepreneurs, and thinking outside of the box. Dyslexia often co-occurs with comorbid diagnoses, and the most common ones include ADHD, visual processing disorder, auditory processing disorder, expressive and receptive language delays, oppositional defiant disorder, depression, and anxiety. Dyslexia is a spectrum disorder affecting people mildly, moderately, and severely. As many as 5 to 30% of the population, the world population, is dyslexic. Sally Shaywitz, in her book Overcoming Dyslexia, said, the 30% of children who still cannot separate the sounds in spoken word after a year of reading instruction likely reflect the 20 to 30% of school children who go on to experience dyslexia. Most children with dyslexia are not in special education. Of the children in special education, 80% of them are dyslexic. I have links for the sources of all of this information in my description. What reading disabilities are not dyslexia? I found this to be really interesting. Most reading disabilities are caused by dyslexia. Other causes of reading below grade level that need to be ruled out in order to diagnose dyslexia are a lack of being taught, an intellectual disability, being taught to read in your second language, and then the rest of these that I'm going to read often co-occur with dyslexia. So they are not dyslexia and they can affect reading. Autism spectrum disorder can affect abstract reasoning and logical thinking which affects reading comprehension. ADHD can cause problems in learning to read because of a lack of focus. Auditory processing disorder, which often is hand in hand with dyslexia. Temporal processing disorder affects speed of word recognition and automatic recall of word spellings despite IQ. Visual processing disorder causes tracking problems. Naming speed disorders, rapid naming, can make it difficult to recall information. 
Naming speed disorder sounds a lot like temporal processing disorder, so if anybody knows if those are the same thing, please let me know. These different disorders happen so commonly with dyslexia that it's almost like an indicator of dyslexia, but essentially dyslexia is phonological processing. But when you really get down to it, dyslexia is a difference in the way the brain works. My family and I recently designed shirts for Dyslexia Awareness Month, so I'll put links to those in the description as well. So there you have it. That's my definition of dyslexia. If you're wondering if you or your child have dyslexia, I put links in the description for online screening tests. And remember, there's lots of different symptoms of dyslexia, and I would like to make more videos about that in the future. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Please subscribe to the channel and make new videos every Thursday.